First order attack. OK, simple definition. The attack is made in real time. Yet someone's looking at your system, your internet facing application, thinking, how can I get into it? Right. Typically, a malicious string passes code, often a parameter. What can it do? I'm just going to do it. I'll do a demonstration and then we'll come back and work out why it works. Why it works. So I'll log on. Who am I connected as? Show user. Oh, I'm Scott. Scott will do. Scott would normally do, but I've given Scott quite a lot of high privileges. Now, what I'm going to do is begin by setting up a web environment. We noticed on the registrations, a lot of you are working with Apex. So I'll do a web environment. The web basically creates a simple web application and then demonstrate how to break into it. So first off, I need to get HTTP listening working. So I'll set an HTTP port. And then I'll create a database access descriptor. You wouldn't normally be doing this for a production site, of course. You, know, you, you wouldn't be using this. You'd be using an Apache web listener or web logic server to do HTTP listening. Um, I'm just going to use the database listener with that. And then I'm using the embedded PL SQL gateway, the EPG, to enable access to HTTP. So just check that works. And yes, my listener is listening on port 8008 for HTTP. Good. So I can now proceed. And that was simply enabling that. And that DAD, the database access descriptor, that is the virtual path through which I can invoke my code. So I'll write a very simple application, a very, very simple web application, which I'll walk through the code very soon. But I just want to demonstrate the problem first. What this application is going to do is prompt you, in effect, for a table name and a column name, table name and column. And then it is going to use the HTTP print procedure to print out that column of that table. So let me get my browser over. The first URL I'll run is the one that perhaps the programmer expects you to issue. The programmer is expecting you to say HTTP, listening address, host and port, Scott, that's that URL that I configured there, or URI, I should say. And then what am I going to do? I'm going to run the procedure show Scott, the procedure show Scott, which I created here. And I'm passing through the arguments, table name emp, column name ename. So just as here, I was going to run the proceed, the function, the procedure f, passing through those arguments for my Apex application. Now I'm invoking my own code. So let's run that and see what we get. I get back the names of all the people in the emp table. That's exactly what I wanted. That's what the program was expecting to happen. I could give it a variation. Perhaps I'll go to depth and get out the D name. And back come the department names. So this would be what you see when navigating the application. You're clicking on certain things and you see these URLs appearing. Let's see if we can break in. All right. The next URL I'm going to issue is this. It's a bit more complex. Begins the same way. Show Scott table name equals amp. But then we've got a load of stuff. Let's put that into the browser and see what happens. Well, knock me down with a feather. I've got a whole lot more. I've got all the employees in the amp table, but I've also got OE, PM, SH, IX, HR, Apex public user, spatial CSW admin, spatial. I've got an awful lot of stuff coming through here. Sis. What I've done is I've simply managed to get a listing of every account in this database. What do you think of that? So how did it work? Look at my procedure show, Scott. We're putting through two parameters, constructing an array. That's just to store the output. And then I've got a variable, stmt, varchar2, 100 bytes. 
And what that variable STMT says is select concatenated to column name, which is that, concatenated to from Scott dot, concatenated to table name, that argument there. So when I ran this, table name became emp, column name became ename, and that statement became select ename from scott.emp. No problem. So that's the statement which you run with execute immediate, and then loop through the results, printing them out. Let's say I try to hack by looking at, say, table name all users. Table name all users, ampersand, column name equals username. I try to go to the all users table. Doesn't work. And that looks secure. So what I've tried to do is query all users, that view that everybody has access to. Doesn't work because the statement being constructed says Scott dot all users. And of course that isn't going to work. So why did this work? And I ran this command here, or this URL here, wherever it is, this one. It works because of the crafted parameter. What I've done is I've said table name emp percent 20. Percent 20 is the hexadecimal code for a space. Union space all space select space username space from space all users. It's that simple. Badly written code, I can query any table I want. I can query any view I want through this technique. That's your first order attack.